Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. My name's Alan, and this week I'm gonna be finishing off the kind of caves and caverns terrain uh, that I started last week. I do have an idea for part three of this sort of theme, and uh, let me know down below in the comments if you'd like to see more of this caves and caverns kind of stuff. So for this set, this week I created a small kind of cave pool, some stalagmites, and a kind of patch of mushrooms and things like that that grow in these sort of caves and caverns and things. And so without further ado, let's just crack on with it. All right, let's make some stalagmites out of sculptor mold. Uh, for this method, really you just want to be kind of working it into a vague cone shape. It will get easier as, as it kind of starts to cure. The curing time for this is I feel like it's quite a long time to be fully cured and fully dried out um, but in the first five minutes or so of of using it and sculpting it it does dry out a lot and harden up quite a lot and it becomes easier to sculpt and mold sometimes just setting it to one side and then working on another piece is a really good idea while you're waiting for it to sort of harden up and cure a little bit um, these two pieces are actually going to be put together I'm actually going to place this larger piece on a heavy washer that I found and hopefully that should uh, kind of cement its way into the bottom and then I'm going to add a dowel down the center of this piece and join these two pieces together to make a stalagmite and stalactite where they've kind of joined together in the middle there are of course other ways to make stalagmites and stalactites and using foam and plaster and things is all perfectly viable but this is a material that I just wanted to really get to grips with that I haven't really got a chance to use very much uh, in the past and I just want to really try my hand at it and hopefully get better using it. And although this piece is a kind of conjoined stalagmite stalactite type scenario uh, most of them that I made were just a stalagmites just the the cones pointing up from the ground. So once this thing has been fully cured, you can go about painting it. I'm just going to use a whole bunch of washes, just layering up lots of different washes and hopefully creating this kind of uh, overall finish that looks like a mineral deposit. I mean, most stalagmites uh, tend to be just mineral, uh, calcium mineral deposits and end up being this kind of quite light brown color or maybe even almost um, pearly in color or just plain white uh, as calcium tends to be and basically I just wanted these to look kind of realistic but there are some occasions here where I wanted them to look a bit more tying in with the uh, kind of dark dank cave rather than um, looking too out of place being too lightly colored because the rest of the cave is quite dark and I just wanted these things to really fit into the environment so I do darken them down a little bit uh, eventually of course that you can choose any kind of colors you feel like I think as long as it looks either realistic or cool I think you're onto a winner obviously I made a whole bunch of these in different sizes and shapes as well and I just want them to have that kind of smooth look that stalagmites tend to have being mineral deposits uh, but also kind of look like rock at the same time which is really quite difficult to do and I'm actually going to darken these down with this kind of this is just the usual black brown multi-purpose wash I like to call it uh, that I use for a lot of different things and I'm just going to really kind of hopefully get this into the crevices and cracks and really fill out those shadows and shades I would definitely recommend using different amounts of washes, different concentrations of washes and just different colors in general on these stalagmites because you know rocks are all different colors and if they're too uniform it might look a little bit too weird so having different variations is I think pretty good. And sometimes you're just not happy with the effect you've got so you might just straight up paint it gray and then use the multi-purpose wash on it again. <laughs> So here's a few that I did paint grey just to see what the overall finish would look like. I'm just going to use my multi-purpose wash here on all of these. And you can see here there's some 
kind of browns and earthy tones in the grey as well. But that's just to give a little bit of colour variation to make the rocks look a little bit warmer rather than just boring and grey. And once they were dry I started to apply some moss in my usual way. As you can see there there's several different kinds of colours of stalagmites and I think they all look pretty good together. Now for this next piece I just wanted to create a very tiny uh, area where some mushrooms may have begun to grow. So I took a cocktail stick and to create some mushrooms I just glued on with some wood glue, some dowels to the ends and then shaped them with a dremel. This method is far easier than you think it is and honestly if you don't have something like a 3D printer where you can just print off little mushrooms this is a great alternative for really hard wearing mushrooms. So I stuck them all down to a piece of uh, sculptor mold and just kind of textured that and then painted the whole thing brown with a rattle can spray. And then I moved on to an actual paint job. Also, if you're using a paintbrush to paint spots on mushrooms, then you're a sucker. So just use a cocktail stick and that's much, much easier. And apply a wash to add a little bit of texture and definition. And I'll be using the product on the left here, the Burnt Grass Fine Turf, to create some moss, which will kind of go over all this, this base area. Just mix it together with some PVA glue and just start spreading. Now, for me, all caves should have a kind of body of water of some description, a nice little cave pool, if you like. So I'm just going to build up a little bit of groundwork here using some more Sculptor Mold. Sculptor Mold seems to be the star of this show today, so I'm going to use a little bit of this stuff and create this kind of crater-like space where I can start placing some bits of slate around, which will act as some nice little rocky areas around the edge. Just small pieces of regular slate make really good analogues for miniature rocks uh, due to their texture and kind of natural cleavage, as it's known, uh, which shows these nice little lines, these nice little striations across the rock. I also added another little stalagmite to this pond as well, using sculptor mold again. And then put some PVA glue across the whole thing spread it around with a pretty dirty paintbrush by the looks of it and then added some texturing in the form of some basing sand avoiding all of the slate of course and then covered the whole thing with a medium grey And then I hit the whole thing with my multi-purpose wash and I left quite a lot of this wash towards the middle of the pond area here uh, to insinuate the illusion of depth. And a bit more moss around the edge. I think it's always a good idea to add things like you know, that natural living material to these pieces. And then I'm going to use some two-part epoxy resin to create the water. After mixing these together in equal volumes, I added a little bit of acrylic paint for the tint. And I went with a kind of greenish blue. I wanted some nice water rather than kind of grimy, horrible brown, black, dark, horrible water. And 
and using my classic technique of obscuring the camera I poured in the resin and then kind of smoothed it out around the edges and once that was dry I wanted to add some ripples to the surface so I used some gloss mod podge spread it around and then used a straw to blow in some ripples I wanted to give the illusion that maybe this pond was sustained by water droplets just dropping into it. There we are guys, that's pretty much done. Uh, it's very generic cave terrain, uh, but it, that's good because you can use it for multiple different scenarios. It's very modular, you can create different styles and, and types of caves in terms of shape and irregularity and things. And obviously just putting things like stalagmites in and crystal clumps and uh, cave pools and mushrooms and things just helps to immerse the player and give them something maybe to investigate or something that uh, you know is maybe useful in some way uh, I tend to have my playable surface if there's anything on it it can be investigated so it doesn't matter what it is and even if it looks kind of boring and, and normal it can be investigated if it's on the, the dungeon tile if you enjoyed this video please feel free to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already it really helps to improve the channel's reach on YouTube um, I'm really grateful for everybody who does comment I, I try and get back to everybody at all times when when people are leaving comments and things and questions and queries so please feel free to keep doing that and I'll get back to you as soon as I can I am on Instagram if you'd like to check that out too I am mostly just posting things from around the workshop projects like this and maybe occasional model that I paint if I ever get around to doing that I am also on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel financially I'd be incredibly grateful and I am grateful to all of these uh, honorary griffins at the moment these guys are like the best people ever helping me to kind of fund this channel and, and produce videos and buy modeling supplies and, and whatnot uh, I've recently got my hands on a 3d printer which I'm quite excited to use and kind of get the hang of I might try and incorporate some parts of it into my terrain but I'm going to be mostly focused on creating things that are manageable for everyone because not everyone has a 3d printer but you know I might occasionally throw the odd thing in there that maybe might be a lot easier to produce or very small or finicky uh, for 3d printing so that's it that's it for this one I'll see you in the next one thanks for stopping by and happy crafting